what I really wanted to think about today is how do we engage our communities? And now that I work for an association of 33 food co-ops and about a third of them being startups, it's, um, I've really been thinking a little bit more about what, you know, established co-ops give so much support and have given so much value to, to the co-ops that are starting up. And there's been so much shared strength and organizational knowledge, but what do startups bring to the movement? And I think what they bring is a necessity to focus on member out outreach and member engagement. And so that's the aha key to me, is how do we reach our community? But of course, through our members. So that sounds easy. It's, it's challenging because you've got this founding group, right? Whether it's a steering committee or board. Your board, you may have board members that have been there for 20, 30 years. Your co-op might be uh, over 70 years old. But I think it's still, it, it's an ongoing issue. How do you take your board, reach out to that community, or reach out to your members, and have your members reach out to their own networks and to their own circles? And how do you keep them engaged in this process? So um, I would say it's really about relationships, which seems obvious, you know? Um, but thinking about how do relationships form? What is the, the purpose of having deep relationships in our life in general or with our mem between our boards and our members and our management? Um, but the basis of a really, what I would consider a successful relationship is coming together around shared values, shared purpose, and shared growth and learning. So I think Pam earlier referred to what do I get out of it? You know that, what was the station, the radio station? What's in it for me? I would like to reframe that a little because I think as a startup organizer, you always get that question. Why would I invest 200 bucks in something that doesn't even, there's no storefront. What's in it for me? So I'm going to reframe that language to think about how do we take our mission, our co-op's mission and vision, and transform it into their mission and vision? What do we have in common with the, all the stakeholders in our community? And I think that's key to this community engagement. And an easy example to see the connection is a local service organization in your community that works on fighting hunger. To be able to meet them where they're at and say, you know what, this is so exciting to meet you because one of the things that our co-op's working on is healthy food access. We have a program at our co-op called Flour or Food for All or Co-op Basics where we're working on making our, our food accessible and our co-op welcoming to every community member in our, in our region. So I think, you know, it's, it's a good challenge is thinking about how do we make that, how do we make our mission, how do we align our mission and vision with other stakeholders in the community and I think messaging and marketing is really important and thinking about your messaging might change a hundred times over as you do outreach to a hundred different community stakeholders. And so thinking about, well, if you're going to build relationships with your members, if you want to continue reaching out to your newer members, how do you kind of bring them into the fold and get them really engaged? Um, what I would say is empower your members to do these things, to be your advocates out in the community. Um, so for example, empower them to have coffee shop conversations and one-on-ones to bring, to bring the idea of what's inspiring to them about their co-op into their normal everyday life and to have these conversations, build their own relationships around the, what makes the co-op so valuable to them. Um, one of the most successful uh, strategies for building relationships with members and reaching out to additional community members that we used with Monadnock Food Co-op, and that another, a number of startups in the neighboring food co-op association are using is this idea of house meetings or um, co-op potlucks, where you empower one of your members to invite over 15 people that know nothing about the co-op or might have heard about it but think it's kind of weird and haven't joined yet. And so what you're doing is you're empowering your member to get out there and get to their networks. I am all about asking your members to commit People talked about the theme of commitment. Ask your members to commit to organizing a community meeting or bringing some part of your co-op's value into the community meetings that are already taking place. A perfect example of that is the, all the GMO labeling stuff that's going on. I think a number of our co-ops in Vermont convened community forums around the GMO labeling issue and invited other stakeholders in the community as part of that. That's really demonstrating the value that those co-ops have in the community. And then, Engaging local decision makers. This, um, 
not, it's not a huge group. It's a pretty small group. This group was a group that, at the beginning, I thought, I'm just, I have this crazy idea to start a food co-op, and there's a small group of people that have said that they're interested, so um, let's get some money to do a feasibility and market study. So I sent out a list to, I think, an email to about 50 people and said, city council's having a meeting. Let's go and ask them for an appropriation to, our, to fund our feasibility study. Where else are we going to get part of this money from? And so what is that? Like 13, 15 people showed up. And because they were there and at the meeting, they ended up voting unanimously in support to give us $5,000 toward our feasibility study. And the reason that they said there's this curmudgeon famous city councilor who voted against everything. And afterwards, he said, you know, I had my doubts about you and your type. And he said, <laughs> but, but that was the largest group that has ever showed up to support something at a city council meeting, which isn't, it might not be something to brag about. But it was just, the point is, is that if, you're, if there's something happening in your city council that is going to positively or negatively impact your co-op, Get your members out there. Say, we need you. Because I think as, you're, as you have more years under your belt as a co-op, and you have incredible staff that a lot of them go above and beyond what they're paid for, I mean, probably everyone, um, it's just I think sometimes it might be tempting to just say, well, our staff are professional, they're expert. But I, I would empower you to keep asking your members to do things. Because if you're asked to do something, you feel that more of that sense of ownership. I'm a part of this. I'm needed to continue to help our co-op thrive. Never do for anyone else what they can do for themselves. And so that's something that I would think about is how do you empower your members and leverage their connections and leverage their relationships to get out to the community? We put together a template, had them put in a one-liner, this is why I joined Get Behind This. And one person forwarded it to, I think, 50 people. And we had three new membership checks in the mail the next day. You know, when you work and build these relationships and the, your members are more engaged as volunteers or being asked more regularly to commit to doing something and commit to participating in something with your co-op, um, things like this will happen where, you know, this is Alan Mendelson is a local financial advisor in Keene and he was, he joined as a founding member owner because he knew someone. And so he put this advertisement out he just added a blurb, supporting Manana community market makes sense. So does a portfolio in sync with your goals. And so, you know, getting that message, who are all the members that own businesses that are part of your co-op? Get them to integrate the co-op the co values into their own advertising and getting the message out there. Um, and so I think, you know, you, it might happen naturally the more that your members are engaged, but you could also ask folks, hey, did you think about, ad, you know, thinking about how your vision is really in line with your co-op that you own? How about integrating that? Um, and I think as the more that investment in relationships happens and the more connected and engaged members are, you can have a complete turnaround. Um, for a startup, there's a whole hunk of people that will say, your idea is totally bunk. That's never going to work. Are you crazy? Or they just don't know what a co-op is and are not successful. Um, or as an established co-op, oh, this co-op sucks. I'm not going to shop there because they don't have blank on the shelves, or whatever reason. Fill in the blank. Um, and I think there is such an opportunity to have a complete turnaround, to have a complete transformation through relationships. You know, in a relationship, it's a tango, right? There's two, two different entities involved, and you're thinking about your members serving you, right? How can our member, we engage our members and they be better advocates for our co-op? If you want to serve your members, I think that International Cooperative Alliance has a great statement. Cooperatives serve their members most effectively and strengthen the cooperative movement by working together through local, national, regional, and international structures. That's what we're doing today. We're working together. And I would say one of the things that was key in Monadnock is reminding people what they are a part of. We are a part of something so much bigger than our individual co-ops. You might sometimes, at the end of a ragged work week, feel like, what are we actually doing? What's the impact that we're having? I just want to remind you that we are a part of a much bigger movement. And I think I would challenge us as cooperators to start acting that way. Don't just talk that way. Let's act that way. And look at the numbers. You know, I'm not talking about a tiny thing. We're, these co-ops together, and this is just in one portion of the country, are responsible for a, a, a very um, 
substantial employment and um, also put a lot back, put a lot of dollars right back into the hands of local farmers and local producers. And they provide good jobs, jobs that pay on average higher than comparable jobs in the same states. So just to, once again, to remind folks, this is a much bigger thing we're talking about. We're not talking about me as one member, we're talking about me as a part of a movement that includes one billion members. So how do we transition from thinking about my co-op to our co-ops? I think that was one of the keys um, for, you know, we were around 300 member owners at Monadnock Food Co-op. When I was able to start telling the bigger picture of what our co-ops were doing together, and, and I would challenge us to think about that in terms of how we engage our members and engage our community, to think about that and to talk about that um, and to demonstrate that in our own co-ops. Um, and I think that was something that was really moving to me as part of the International Year of Cooperatives was to, to look at co-op Facebook pages and websites and see one logo that was in common that was really exciting because it's like, oh, there's a connective thread for people that are not involved in the co-op movement. They keep seeing this logo and say, hey, I didn't know that Cabot was a co-op or I didn't know that all these different things, all these different individual entities are working together for this much bigger picture. So I think what's exciting about the blueprint, one of the most exciting things is thinking about 20 years from now that the co-op model will be the business model that people think about. That is really exciting to me and I think we get there through talking about, you know, engaging our members and, you know, when we're talking about cooperation versus conventional business, one of the major differences is our members. It's our member participation. And I think that's our unique co-op advantage that um, would be really great to think about how we can utilize that more. Um, and, and I think part of that is really just engaging our members. So um, maybe at, just to, to, as a last thought, um, I think what I would, my, my perspective from going from working really intensely in one community and going through that process of building from a founding group uh, board of directors with a vision to reaching out to different networks is thinking about how we can empower and, and continuing to reach out to our members and, and give them a sense of what they're a part of, this much bigger picture of the cooperative movement. So um, that's it for now. Thanks. <laughs>